Welcome to Talking Maine with the Bowtie Boy. I'm Tom Saviello, and my special guest, Chris <laughs> Bailey. Chris, but, welcome. Hey, how are We're you? We're talking about x-rays. Yes. You know, x-ray power. Do you have x-ray eyes that, like Superman? That no, see no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. No, x-rays are actually not very good for your eyes. So. Oh, I didn't think so. So, Chris, <laughs> tell us a little bit about who you are and, and how you got to the hospital to do what you're doing. Yeah, um, well, I'm, my name's Chris Bailey. I actually went to UMF back, um, I guess I'll start there, so I'm going way back, but um, I'm from Maine originally, went to UMF. I was a teacher for three years and decided I uh, needed a change of, change of career, and so I went back to x-ray school and um, about 12 years ago started working at Farmington as an x-ray tech and then uh, kind of worked into different leadership positions, and now I'm the director of radiology cardiopulmonary and cardiology at the hospital. So. And you can have an x-ray thing on your shirt. It's a, it's a long badge. <laughs> yeah. so, so let's go back to where did you go to school? Because this is fascinating when we started the conversation. I didn't realize we had an x-ray school or a tech radiology yep. school in Maine. Uh, the, the, well, there's several in Maine, but the one that I went to was um, the Clark F. Miller School of Radiology, which is now MCHP, or the Maine College of Health Professions down in Lewiston. Um, and then there's another x-ray school over in uh, at KVCC. Uh, there's one over in Eastern Maine, and I believe there's one in Southern Maine as well. So is it a two-year program? It's a two-year associate's degree. Um, and that was one reason I went, you know, kind of that route was it was a quick program and wasn't too expensive, and I could get, you know, kind of re redirect my career in a fairly quick manner. So, did, so they put you, just go through your education part, do they put you right in the field, or they give you some direction and then say, go for it? Yeah, they do, and, um, you know, so... You know, I applied to school, I got in, not really knowing, like everybody, you don't really know what you're getting into until you get there, and, and then they, um, you know, they start school and you start hearing about all the things that you're going to have to do, and you're like, wait, I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> and some of the, you know, there's, we do a lot of um, GI stuff. Um, we Gas, do, so GI is just so that everybody Gastroenterology knows. stuff, um, you know, fluoroscopy, live x-ray, um, you know, and so you... You learn real quick. Like, there's uh, radiology is not very simple. There's a, it's a very broad, broad wow. uh, field. So. so, the GI stuff, the colonoscopies, you're involved in that imaging. It's similar. So, colonoscopies are are definitely the newer, better procedure. Prior to that, um, the way to do that was with a barium yeah. en barium enema. Done that, been there, done that. And that was one of the things on day one. They said you're going to have to learn to do. Really? <laughs> I was like, I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> so, so you had to do the whole thing. Oh yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Oh. So, um, and we do very, very few of those anymore. But once in a while, you still do need to do them for certain reasons. And um, you know, it's just one of those things that comes with the profession. So, oh, oh. <laughs> so there are all kind. I mean, you start rattling off of some of them. So let's just kind of walk through them. And what do you use each one for? So sure. let's start with a simple one: the X-ray. Yep. So general X-ray. Um, you know, the obvious thing is bones, um, but we do a lot of chest X-rays to look for you know pneumonias. Uh, you know, COVID shows up very well on chest X-rays. Does it if really? You've got, if you've got bad, you know, we call them COVID lungs, and they they look bad. Um, do they look irritated? <clears throat> uh, I mean, looks like. I mean, for the in a general sense, like a really bad pneumonia, like really cloudy, um, you know, nice healthy lungs are nice and clear looking. Um, and um, COVID lungs, they don't look good. You, you, wow. wouldn't, you wouldn't want them if you had them. <laughs> wow. um, but, you know, so chest, we do abdomen x-rays. You can look for, you know, um, you know free air, constipation, things like that. Uh, free air would be like a perforation in your bowel. Um, when I was a kid, I swallowed the burr of a dentist drill. <laughs> yeah, that would show up. in my, my uh, tooth, and it caught something, and he hadn't clasped it in. It hit me in the back of the throat and went right down. Yeah. <laughs> so they rushed me to the hospital yeah. because they were afraid it got into my lungs. But yeah. fortunately, whatever closed, closed, and it went to my stomach, and there it was, there it was sitting yep. right there. Sitting, yeah, couldn't miss it. It was right there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, anything metallic uh, or, or, you know, dense would show up um, on x-rays. So... Uh, arthritis, things like that, show up on general X-ray. You know, you see all the extra bone growing around joints and things is like that. Is that what arthritis so, is? Is extra bones? You well, it's, you know, you can is varieties, but you can have you know more bony growth there. But you can also have you know cartilage reduction of cartilage that's worn away, and so you get bone on bone. You know, there's I got it. There's Trust all me. sorts of variations. Things that happen when you get old. <laughs> yeah. So but now, the <clears throat> X-ray technology that's been around for a long, yes. long time. Yes. How does it work? I mean, I don't know. So yeah. that's a, this is why this fascinates me. So X-rays are basically you take an, a beam of electrons, like you just arc. It's an arc, for, so from an anode to a cathode, and um, so the cathode. The cathode basically is like a really hot light bulb. It boils off electrons, and then electrical charge shoots that over at an anode, and it's a the anode is a, a molybdenum um, disc that spins just for heat 
to re reduce heat. And uh, when that when those electrons hit that, they scatter, and a small percentage of that those scattered electrons get turned into X rays. And then that then and that just diffuses down onto the uh, so that yeah. when they put that thing down on me, that diff that's what's diffused down, yep. hits the bone or hits the mass, and then you have a photographic a shadow. Sh yep, uh, basically uh, yep. photographic image that's put onto the exactly. Yep. And the thing that's fascinating, of course, I grew up with the image, the right. actual physical image where they had right. to go and do it and then hang it up. Now right. it's like instantaneous. It's like on the computer. Yep. Now it's fully digital, so those X rays excite you know material in the plate, and that gives off a you know the computer reads that as a little like electrical charge and converts it into a picture. So I, when I went into the hospital for a couple of things I was telling you about, it was funny because uh, with the patient portal, yep. I was being notified that my x-ray was already up and ready right. to look at before the doctor even had a chance to look yes. at it. I yep. felt bad for him because I was doing my own diagnosis of that. Yeah, that's a, that's a loaded loaded uh, thing there. You know, yeah. people start Googling things and yeah. get themselves worked up and yeah. scared. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so that that was when I grew up the only real X-ray technology that's out there. Right. Um, so I grew up in the '50s and the '60s. I broke my wrists a couple of times, my elbows a couple of times. So I got to know X-rays mm -hmm. pretty well and dental X-rays and so forth. It's grown from that so right. significantly. Yep. So what would have been the next? Was it MRI that came along, or was it something else? Nope. That came? Probably CT, CAT scan, um, which uses X-ray. Uh, and I'm not sure where ultrasound would fall in that. That does not use x-ray. That's a whole different field. But a CAT scan is basically a 3D x-ray. Uh, okay, so, okay. so a CAT scan is like a donut you go through, and there's an x-ray tube that spins around you and basically slices you up like a slice of bread. And the computer you know, takes hundreds of pictures you know, and, and you know, combines all the, that data into, into your, your CAT scan, sli your slices. So, so, would they, so like I described to you, I had an issue with memory. Mm -hmm. And they put me, and I think they must have put me through the CAT scan. Yep. Were they were looking for a tumor, or were they probably, probably looking for a bleed? First of all, make sure you're not having a, a you know a massive stroke, um, and then we can give contrast. We can actually look at the the arteries in your in your brain as well. And, make and sure that would have been through a CAT scan. Could have been, yep. Could have, most likely in in an, an acute situation, we would do CAT scan because that's the quickest. Wow. Um, MRI also is very good at looking at the arteries in your. So the CAT scan is just an electrology. Uh, so what I had to have nuclear for my heart. Mm -hmm. Would that have been a CAT scan they put me through because it was a circular kind of thing? So that's a little different. Um, a nuclear medicine study is actually turning you radioactive. So then we're ra reading the radiation coming off of you. Oh, okay, that's right, because so, I had to take the stuff or they gave yep, me the shot. Or yep, so they give you a shot, um, and basically, depending on what you're having, it's combined. the isotope is combined with a different um, medication that'll be taken up by different parts of your body. So we can look at your heart like you did, um, like with regular, um, you know, different, um, I'm, I'm, they use different sugars that the heart sucks up because it's a muscle. Um, but we can look at the thyroid and attach it to iodine. We can look at, you know, bone studies. It's attached to, uh, um, you know, something your bones will absorb. Um, so, so in that case, they eject it. Your heart absorbs that, and then they stick you under a gamma camera, which just a gamma camera detects uh, radiation. So then they uh, then they look at so your it's heart. Like a big uh, um, Geiger counter. Kind right, of kind of yeah. And so, w looking at your heart, what they would be looking for is p parts of your heart that did not take up that that isotope. In that would indicate that there's a deficiency in the muscle there. A blockage or, a blockage or something. Or something. Or something like that. Oh, yep. wow. Fascinating. Yep. Man. I mean, as I say, this technology is so dramatically changed about yep. what you can see and right. what you can't see and what's right. going on. There's no secrets anymore in your no, body. No, no. No. And it's, and it, it compli in some, to some degree, it can complicate things because we all have weird things wrong yeah. with us that you'll, that you'll never know. You know, but then you throw somebody in a scanner and get a full, full scan of your body. Well, you start finding all these incidental things that don't really matter, but, um, you know, it's just well, like it's like I had an EKG and they found out I had a bundle block something. Yeah. It's like, well, when did that happen? Oh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, so I have something that my EKG is abnormal because yeah. of that bundle block that's right. in there. Yeah. But I'm still got. But the most important thing they did find, and all you people are watching, I want you to note this: <laughs> I have a heart. <laughs> they did find my heart there. Yep. And, and you had a CT scan, so and you I got had a brain. C so I, well, yeah, I don't know how big it is, but <laughs> I had one. <laughs> and, and that was that was fast. So okay, so. So your the um, imaging, the CAT scan, is just a, a, if you will, a 3D or a circular cutting, slicing of your body using X-ray. Yep. So then, where do we go from there? To a then uh, MRI. So yeah, still when you're talking about um, similar types of imaging would be MRI, and MRI uses um, it's, a, it's a giant magnet. Um, 
and that basically uses a magnet and radio frequencies to um, really what the magnet does is it shifts all of the water molecules in your wa in your body you know, to one direction and then the radio frequencies can pick that up it's a it's pretty high level physics it's really cool um, really yeah so so you know water molecule is a you know it's partially well, charged it's partially charged and so you stick somebody in a giant magnet and everything shifts um, and then so what MRI really picks up on is the differences in water, water in different tissues. So that's how you differentiate your tissues. That's what makes the picture because all tissues are different okay. densities. All right. So <laughs> let's go. Let's go to my wrist. That's the easy yeah. one. I put my wrist because I had problems with my wrist, yeah. and we were trying to check it out to see what was going on. So I went into the MRI. So it would have charged the water particles, and then it would have imaged the bone. It's imaging all the tissue. So. Um, and, you know, we have different scans that look, you know, with different radio frequencies that are good for different types of tissue. So whether we're looking at the ligaments and tendons or fat tissues or, or bone. Bone is actually not a great to see. What they're, what they're probably looking for is some kind of tumor within that bone or a cyst in that bone. And that would have shown um, up. That's probably yeah. what it was. Because yep. yeah. I, I remember asking afterwards, I said, you know, you said I thought I had arthritis. Yeah. Why did you put me through this? And she said, because if that little gray area had been some kind of a bone tumor right and you ultimately had a problem you could have come back and said I had malpractice that I misdiagnosed you right but I said well what were the odds oh about 10 million to one that I had bone cancer <laughs> but I still had to go through but it was right. an interesting yep. exercise to go yep. through yes so thyroid I've had thyroid stuff do they go and they use a different kind they use an ultrasound ultrasound yep. so all right well maybe they should finish the sequence of CAT scan <laughs> MRI PET scan is, so, would that be a logical sequence, or is there something in between that? Yeah, I so a PET scan is really a combination of a CAT scan and a nuclear medicine study. So you're getting a CT scan with a nuclear medicine study, and they overlay those two studies together. So you're getting the injection of the radioactive isotope, to, and those are really to look for, look for cancers in your body. Um, that gets sucked up by any cancer in your body, and then, but then that picture, the nuke med, nuclear medicine pictures are not real pretty, like you know, like you see on TV when you see the 3D pictures in, in TV shows. Um, CAT scan can do that, um, so you do them together, and you can overlay them and have a nice 3D image of the body with the hot spots where any cancers might be. So it shows up where it's moved to, or whatever, or it's yep. hiding. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one of the things right. I learned about cancers: it can go find a place. Yes. To, quiet and hide until right. everything, all the chemotherapy has gone by and right. then it comes back out to haunt you. Yeah. And it's nasty when it does that. Right. So that's what that does. So yeah. they give you, what, what kind of drugs do they put in then? To, like, to, to the cancer selectively picks this up? Is yeah, so I mean, cancer is like, I mean, I'll, I believe, I, we don't have PET scan at Farming here, but I believe that it's different types of sugars. So cancer are cells that are re, you know, reproducing at a much higher rate than anything else, which means they need more energy and um, suck up more sugar. Um, so basically, it's the, we try we you know you try to identify what that whatever you're looking at you know what does that type of cell utilize over the rest of your, more than the rest of your body. Um, so wow, um, yeah, technology. Um, so okay, so let's now. Mm -hmm. So is that the kind of the sequence of radiology in the sense of normal things i mean yeah i mean and then one of the more one of the most common things we also do are ultrasounds i was um, just going to get that was yeah. my next one <clears throat> yep and so all the other ones are um and ultrasound is incredibly uh, there's a ton of technology in ultrasound as well ultrasound really is becoming um the technology physical technology hasn't changed a whole lot but the the computer technology the model the computer algorithms that that convert the uh the information coming through the probe into into imaging you know has advanced tremendously over the years. Um, so now that we can, you know, we can do 3D imaging with ultrasound of, you know, the most common thing were, <clears throat> would be babies when you get your, you know, your, uh, you know, so you can get the nice 3D pictures of the baby. And yeah, I just got one. My granddaughter, oh, there you my, go. Da yeah. my daughter's uh, pregnant and yeah. uh, she just sent up the latest scan and it's like, oh my God, it's yeah. just everything. And, and so that's just using ultrasound, which is essentially like sonar. You know, you send out a sound, a high frequency sound waves and it bounces back and the, and the probe picks, an picks that up. And, yep. Wow. So, but they use that for all ultrasound. For ultrasound, all kinds yeah. Of and babies are kind of the, I don't want Babies are just a piece. I mean, we do everything, abdominal stuff. We look at arterials and stuff and veins. And, um, you know, we can look at, you know, any lumps and bumps. We can scan those to see whether they're, you know, cysts or tumors or, you know, we do a lot of breast ultrasound, looking for breast cancers, um, you know, carotids, things like that, thyroids. Um, 
you know, echo is a branch of ultrasound, so echoes are ultrasounds of okay, your heart. Okay, so let's talk about echo, because that's how you use that in a heart. Yep, and so that's looking at the echo, generally, um, primarily looking at, at the heart, looking at the valves in the heart, seeing how the valves are functioning, you can see whether you've got leaky valves or any other defects within the heart. Um, so, um, is, it, is it a radio wave or is it again? Same exact thing, it's just a sound, you know, they wow. use a high frequency sound wave and it you know, bounces off and we just pick it up and turn it into a picture. I mean, I can remember <laughs> ultrasound with my son, but Ben, of course he's 36 now, but um, there were some questions of whether things were viable or not. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't remember how long, far along we were, but the, the radiologist was doing the ultrasound yep. and you could see this little Yep. And so we're looking at her and she's looking at us and says, is that his heart? And she couldn't tell us legitimately because she was not the radio, she's going to read the radiology, oh, but yep. she knew we were anxious. She said, yep. yes, it is. Yep. So, um, wow. So do, do you do, you don't do any of the readings yourself? Though, no, do you? so no. You, so that's a radiologist who, you know, is a medical doctor, um, you know, went to many years of school. Uh, they have, takes quite a long time to be a radiologist, but yeah, they, and they read Farmington. We, um, you know, we've got a couple permanent radiologists here and they read they, every study that comes through Farmington they read uh, wow. and create a report for so wow. um, which, which is a, can be a pretty high volume so so you talked about fluorescence or fluoroscopy fluoroscopy what yep. is fluoroscopy so fluoroscopy is x-ray it's just basically live x-ray so you know if you instead of instead of just taking a snapshot you've got a video camera that's doing x-rays so so we can do like swallowing studies and watch people swallow foods and make sure there's no problems in their throat we can do um, we do our, like, so uh, we'll do joint injections under fluoroscopy so you can watch watch where the needles needles going when we're doing injections things, no things like that yeah is, is that what same with like with the heart when they put something in a dye in your leg yep. same, same same thing idea? Yep. yep and you follow it all the way back yep. up again yep same thing. only thing I've heard about that is that it, it, the actual exercise is not that bad it's the, the time after because you have the heart these headaches right Yep. clearing out your system yeah so you act in the shoulder you actually do this we do joint injections in the shoulder i mean shul we can do them shoulders hips any joint um if you need um, sometimes they'll inject some um, long lasting lidocaines or numbing medication for people with joint pain um, oh. or it can be a diagnostic study to check check and see what how much joint space there is and um you know how much arthritis there is and so uh, injecting a little contrast into the joint um, wow and then, then when you do that, you actually put it, put them on the, do an X-ray of them, correct? Uh, well, a lot of times, sometimes, like we do a lot of uh, um, MRI arthrograms. So we'll inject a little bit of contrast into the joint that shows up on MRI, then send them to M for their MRI, so that just kind of brightens that joint up and gives so they can really see what's going. Gives us on. a little more information. Holy yeah. mackerel! Yeah. This is unbelievable. It's yeah, changing. there's. It's such a huge field that you know you think radiology is very simple and you just X-ray and you X-ray and I'm done. Right. So what um, what else have I missed in the X-ray realm that that's kind of interesting? This is all intriguing. To um, me. So, I mean, we do we do a lot of stress tests at Farmington. So looking at the heart, um, we do, you know, Farmington. We're a small hospital, so we don't do the things like PET scans. But you know, another branch would be like you mentioned, um, like cath cath labs in like big, the bigger hospitals when they go in and. Um, through an artery, usually in your leg, or sometimes your arm, um, to fix things in your heart um, or even brain, um, and they do all that under X-ray as well. So, um, you know. Do they have the X-ray little microchip that they can put on the end of the tube, like the colonoscopy <laughs> thing that they can? Uh, send through? I don't. I don't know that. I. I really. I'm not sure. We. I've never been had the the opportunity to be in any cath labs. Um, you know, but they're. It's pretty neat because they can grab. They do have grabbers and things like that, so they can they can pull out clots and no things kidding. like that. Wow. Um, so, so where's the future going to go out of this? I mean, what, what do you see when you're old like me? What's what are we going to have? I, I think that the big you know the we're seeing the big biggest changes now, and I think this is across the board, not just with imaging, but with um, software. Uh, it's not so much the physical technology. Uh, it's now taking that physical technology and getting, our, you know, developing developing better software to analyze the imaging. Um, so artificial intelligence is certainly uh, coming up in radiology um, already. There's some, you know, there's some companies that are trying to sell sell some some AI type software to like pre-screen chest X-rays and things like so that. So what would it do? I always see artificial intelligence. I'm trying to figure out. Remember, my, I can yell at my computer, but right. it's really the guy who's inputting <laughs> right. this stuff into the computer. Yeah, so AI is would be, you know, you essentially are feeding, feeding a piece of software thousands of chest x-rays. And 
and basically so that it would learn like what an abnormal chest x-ray looks like and what a baseline normal would look like. Um, so I think the idea is that over time, over t you know, with the AI software, it would help be an assistant to the radiologist who's actually reading and, and highlight possible questionable areas or... I got you. I mean... So it's, it's by artificial, you're training it as this is normal. So if Tom's got a normal right. chest, you might feed mine into it. You got a normal chest. Right. Everybody's got normal chest, and they start to look for the key criteria that's a normal chest. Right. Now they have somebody who comes in that's a patient that is abnormal, right. and they feed all that stuff into it. So now the artificial intelligence say, this is what was, was normal, this is what I've seen as key points to look at that are abnormal, match yep. it up and say, okay, you've got, you've got an issue here, whether it be cancer or whether right. you've got inflammation of those, uh, the lung wall or something like yep. that, be able to tell the difference. Right, about. exactly, yep. So, and obviously, I mean, that's growing everywhere throughout in, you know, in all technology, the, the AI kind of in, inputs. So, you know, I think in time, we'll just see more and more of that. We won't see it. It'll just be there in the background. So when a typical patient comes in, let's say in the emergency room, mm -hmm. how does your crew gear up to start doing that? How do you know what tests to do or, and, yep. and so forth? So those are all ordered by the physician in the ED. Um, I know you've had Abby, yeah. Abby on, and um, so we work very closely with the ED physicians, and um, we have a great relationship with them. And so, you know, they depends on the, what type of patient too. If it's a really critical patient, you know, a really bad accident or something, um, at Farmington, Farmington generally is more of a stabilization point, and then we'll life light them out. Um, but we'll frequently be down there with a portable X-ray unit, so we can get some immediate portable X-rays if we need to. Um, which is nice they're all digital now so it's instant you know we yeah, take the yeah. picture you can see it on the screen of the machine and um you know we can say oh, you know he's got a he needs a chest tube he's got a pneumothorax or things like that we can see right away really quick um so really acute situations we're down there with a portable um yeah, i'm sorry that's okay it's it my, only cost you five it's my uh, morning meeting alarm oh. <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh but if it's not, it's a, if it's a more routine ED patient, you know, then they just put the orders in. If it's, you know, we prep them as needed and um, just kind of work with the nursing staff to get them down to our department and um, get their imaging done. So how many people do you have working with you at, at Farmington? So, I mean, I have multiple departments, so I, but totally, I, total, I have about 55 direct reports. Wow. Um, I've got a couple managers um, to help out with that. Because um, I also, you know, I also have respiratory therapy. So, oh, we should talk about that. Yeah, we, so I have I have all the respiratory therapists who are the people that um, they run the ventil ventilators, and um, they're the ones that are really uh, the more critical people in a in a crit with a critical patient because they're maintaining airway and um, assisting with all with the ventilators and things like that. Ventilators. So, I mean, little I knew about it is when you get on a ventilator, it's really tough coming off a ventilator, isn't it? Yes, or is it that can. technology changed? So? No, it definitely it can be, and um, you know, getting people back to their baseline, it takes takes some time and um, takes some definitely some skilled skilled therapists. Um, so, how many ventilator beds do we have at Farmington? We have five beds in the ICU, um, and we're actually um, trying to keep those open as much as possible. We we don't frequently have a lot of people on ventilators at Farmington. I mean, a week ago, I think we had two on at once, which was a little abnormal for us. Um, you know, we're a pretty small hospital. So and COVID, did that drive more use of the ventilator up here? Or no, not, no. The way Maine Health kind of decided to do it was they had whole, whole COVID wings down at Maine Med. Um, so the people that were really, really sick and needed vents, they went to Maine Med. And then, but that let us keep, keep more people up here you know, so, um, so we kind of almost traded traded patients. The did um, with COVID, you talked about how bad it was. Did it, the lung heal afterwards, or did it still? Is it pretty severely you know, impacted? You know, I'm not sure at this point. Um, you know, because it hasn't been that far out. Um, my inclination after seeing lungs like that is it would be a long recovery. Um, you know, myself, I I do a lot of mountain biking and I'm very active and like. That scared me to death. The idea of you know that that kind that kind of uh, long term effects you know because it clearly would have a pretty significant effect on your. And you can see um, why if one was compromised already yeah. health wise to come right. in with that kind of a infection or a disease that would be really nasty. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So what do you like best about your job? Oh, um, I really like being able to support my staff. To you know, I we take a lot of pride in on my departments with our quality. You know, our imaging quality at Farmington is comparable to. The biggest hospitals in the country. You know, we have we have fantastic imaging quality. I have 
great staff. My longest, my average employee length is like 11 and a half years. Wow. Um, so I've got a lot of really experienced techs and, um, you know, I just enjoy working with them to support them, bringing in new, um, new services if we can and um, working with the other departments to kind of create a, you know, as efficient uh, department and, and hospital as, as we can, you know, do the best thing we can, best we can for our patients. And I mean, it's, to me, it's great that we have a local local man. Absolutely, you yeah. Know, you live in New Vineyard. Yeah, yeah, yep. yes, yep. right across the border. Yeah, and I went to Farmington. You know, my wife and I both went to Farmington. Our daughter goes to Sweat Winter. You know, before and after care, the daycare here on campus, and you know, 20 years ago, we would never would have guessed we'd be walking our seven year old daughter across campus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, maybe she'll stay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Chris, I think it's great. I, you know, now I know who to complain to when yeah, I'm absolute, to the hospital. Absolutely. Get that Chris Bailey guy <laughs> yeah. down here and get him to check things right. out. I think it's great. Anything that you'd like to say to anybody that says uh, before, as we close the show out? Just, um, no, I think thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And, you know, like being able to talk, talk shop and, you know, tell people what we do. Great. Chris, so, thanks for coming on. Say hi to the old man for me. All right, we'll do. Tell thanks. him that retirement's good. I'm getting yeah. closer. Even though I've been out 10 years, I'm almost ready to make it fun. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, he's doing a lot of fishing, so he's good. Good for him. Good for him. <laughs> good. Thanks for tuning in. That was really fascinating. Chris, uh, we'll put a phone number up for you if they need a contact. Sure. And it'll run right here at the bottom. You okay. can see it. You'll, it'll be running great. across in case they have any questions or concerns about it. But great show. Thank you. All right. Very fascinating. I actually learned something good. today. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Talking Maine.